Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Um, I was thinking because I was like, yeah, it's kind of to keep it on the topic of Ramadan. So, mm-hmm. um, but I don't know. This is just something. Well, two things. Like as a Christian, you know, you know, just speaking to Christian, you know, family or, you know, about like the crucifixion. It's almost like it. It's so emotional, mm-hmm. and it's like the crux of Christianity, and. There's, you can't really speak logically about it, or you're right because it's just so emotionally bound to mm-hmm. the Christian paradigm. It's what unites all of Christians right. too. They don't all believe yeah. certain things, but that is one exactly. of the things that they're all united on. Right. So it's something that's. Um, how do you, you know what I'm saying? Like I just, I feel like that's kind of the point. Like like my mom, for instance, mashallah, she's. She's like amazing, and she actually she's like she's like when I when I when I call out to God, I say Allah God, you mm-hmm. know. And she believes in the Prophet Muhammad mm-hmm. sallallahu But when it comes to the crucifixion, it's like she she's, she can't let go of it, right? And so it's just it's like really amazing. So I'm just kind of wondering from your experience or just in Dawa or you know what I'm saying? Like how mm-hmm. do we kind of how do we bridge that in the sense that we know that that. Um, that someone was made to look like Isa mm-hmm, mm-hmm, You know what I'm mm-hmm, saying? So it mm-hmm. almost makes sense that they would believe that. Mm-hmm. So kind of what, what, just from your experience, your perspective on that. Well, one thing is, like I said, sometimes you got to do the, uh, the multiple choice thing that I mentioned. You know, like, if you had a choice, if the choice was yours, that in order for God to forgive you, he had to kill Jesus who didn't do any of this or that he can forgive you just by grace and you making a sincere effort you saying sorry and just ask sometimes just reducing it down to just uh, presenting it some type of rational kind of multiple choice it puts it in a different context because ultimately it, it's 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 something that for for a Christian, that's salvation. You know, myself when I was uh, starting to read the Quran and read more into it, that was the one issue for me personally. I was like, yeah, I believe God is one. I don't believe Jesus is God. Um, everything I'm reading, but then when it got to that particular issue, that they didn't kill nor crucify him, only a likeness of that was shown to him. And with no other details, I was, it like put me in like crisis. Like, what am I supposed to do? And then I had to really work through that. Like, well, what does that issue really involve for me? Why do I feel so attached to it? Because it has to do with how we're forgiven. Right? And that's one of the gifts of religion is a means of forgiveness. Right? Like, how do we right our wrongs? You know, not just there's righting our wrongs that we do from one human to another, right? That, that's one. But then how do we right the wrongs that we do before our creator? Right? That has to be like of like not prime primary importance because some one of the things I, I even learned, this was maybe about a just a few months ago, this reflection really hit me that we believed in the Ten Commandments, right? As Christians, everybody knows about the Ten Commandments. What's the first one? Right? Exactly. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, which we can easily translate as la ilaha illallah. I said, wow. And don't we believe that God gives a sense of priority to things? So if there's a list of Ten Commandments, why is that the first one? We would say there's intention behind that being the first commandment. And so it made me realize, even still, like I said, I've been Muslim for almost 28 years. I'm still learning. And it just hit me recently that, wow, like, Islam is reviving the primacy of the first commandment. Right? And that's why Allah says and advises us when we have these discussions with the people of the book, say, come to a word we share between us, which is not whether or not Jesus was crucified, peace be upon him. The word that we share between us is that we both say there's nothing worthy worse than God. We both say there's one God. God is one. And so 
that caused a shift for me personally just to focus like, okay, this crucifixion thing, that is an issue. But that has to do with how we rectify our affair with God. But there's this other thing that's even more important. Believe it or not, it's more important than that, which is the very first commandment. If we can agree to that, then let's see what's calling to that in the clearest, most unambiguous manner. Because once I shifted my, like I said, I literally became obsessed with this issue of crucifixion. I wrote songs. I was in the band at that time. I have songs about, two songs in particular, that I wrote about this issue of, of the crucifixion. Okay? As a Christian. Right. And so here I am writing a song, but that's how much it, like, it gripped me, you know, spiritually and theologically, that I'm writing about it in a, in a rock song, you know. But again, I had to look at what else is around this. You know what I mean? How am I forgiven? And when I finally got to the verse in the Quran where God talks about sacrifices and how, just like fasting, he's also given rights, sacrificial rights, to this community and also other communities. But he says, it's not their meat nor their blood that reaches Allah. It's the piety in your heart. When I read that, I was, I was done with that whole thing. And I was like, okay. Even as, you know, having this understanding that, you know, as a Christian, we were, okay, they were always being taught he was the sacrificial lamb. He's, you know, the, the Jews used to have you know, to be forgiven, they had to sacrifice the lambs and animals. And, and then you realize it's actually, there were other things they did. Like, what if you didn't have a, a lamb or a sheep? I mean, you can't be forgiven? No. They had other things. You could use grain, right? Certain types of stocks that you had stored up. Why? Because it really, in, in the sight of God, it's not just ultimately, like the verse says, it's not the meat or the blood, or in the, the case in the Jewish tradition, it's not the grain and the wheat that reaches Allah. It's just the sincerity of giving up, sacrificing something of value for Him as a sign that, no, I'm serious. I'm, I'm sorry. I am going to give up this thing. You see what I mean? So for me, those types of things are really helpful. And at the end of the day, I would just encourage kind of shifting the emphasis to the first commandment because that's something as a Christian Yes, we know those Ten Commandments, right? Just consider the first one. Why is that the first? The first commandment is not about salvation at all, right? And we have plenty of beautiful and very powerful supporting scripture about the oneness of God and even forgiveness that's attained just by believing that in those who just say, La ilaha illallah, the heaviest thing on the scale, right? We're forgiven even just for saying that. Believing it, obviously in our heart, and saying it, forgive it. And just offer that as the good news. Say, that's our good news. The gospel is the good news. That's the good news. And at the end of the day, we just can present it. And so I'm just trying to share some tools to consider in your next presentation with mom. You know, to say, hey, mom, you know, let's reflect on the, the very first commandment. Because I think maybe we've got sidetracked with some of these other things that are important. And we do that as Muslims, getting to talk about women in Islam and hijab in Islam and jihad in Islam. Start with la ilaha illallah. Islam is the revival of, of the first commandment. That's all. It's, it's, it's unambiguous, uncomplicated monotheism at its finest. And we should be proud to have that in this form. So just something to consider. Inshallah. May, and may Allah guide all our parents. You know, our siblings, our cousins, and we should beg for that in Ramadan. You know, I'm talking to myself, too, like, did I pray for my, my mom and dad last night? I didn't, you know. So I'm saying this, this is a reminder. You're reminding me of my mom and my dad, and my three brothers and sister and my grandmother. You know, we got to pray for folks. Don't be stingy with your prayers and just thinking about yourself and your issues and your needs.